being a public servant to this community. That's awesome. And I think uh, one of the things that we talked about when we were, I, we met each other at the county commission meeting and you spoke mm -hmm. there. You were very mm -hmm. eloquent about what's going on and being in the finance sector, you said you've actually noticed firsthand a lot of the small businesses, guys that are realigning their portfolios basically because uh, they're going broke. Right, yeah. So, you know, a lot of businesses don't run on the kind of margins uh, where you can sustain a six month, seven month shutdown. That, that's just not realistic in the world of business. And, and so a lot of my clients are having to realign their portfolio to be able to have access to some cash to be able to make sure more importantly, you know, a lot of people think about business owners, they think about the owner making all the money, but really it's the employees, it's the family, it's the relationships, it's the trickle down effect that people don't talk about that's being missed because a lot of those business owners are responsible for taking care of other families uh, other than their own. And uh, that's important. So, you know, a lot of times my guys are moving and gals are moving their money around so that they can really take care of their employees and make sure that their family still eat and their rent is still being paid, even though they're no longer taking a paycheck or a draw from their business. They're basically uh, fronting the cash for their business until things get back on again. So, um, you know, extraordinary times for a lot of our clients and their small businesses in this community. Um, and I guess that can take us right into the kind of the hotbed issue that's kind of going on right now. Last night, Governor DeSantis announced that uh, he was giving the green light to bars to go ahead and open up. And yeah. uh, this morning we woke up and got a directive from the county commission basically uh, saying that Palm Beach County would not be participating in that. I believe Dade County said no right away. Uh, Palm Beach County came out this morning, and I believe Broward is still kind of up for grabs right now. Um, do you have an opinion on that, or, or, or how do you feel? Yeah, I do, John. And as I said at the at the county commission meeting, I mean, the you know most people we talk about the CARES Act and the money that the county received to be able to use to be able to make sure we uh, provide resources to respond to the COVID uh, pandemic and how those dollars were spent. But beyond that, now what I'm hearing from businesses is that, look, John, we don't want any money from anybody or anything. What we wanna do is just go back to work. And um, we just wanna work. There's families, there's kids, there's employees, and all they really wanna do is just work. They don't want any money from anyone. They just wanna go back to work. And um, I stated at the commission meeting that you know, because these families want to do that, they want to do it safely. They want to get back to work safely. It's important to them because a lot of them take care of grandparents and families and, and moms and elderly at home. And so they want to work, but they want to go back safely. Um, and so I was a big proponent of, hey, opening the county to phase two per the governor's plan. Let's open up Florida. Let's move forward to Palm Beach County. And the governor said, hey, we're doing that. And uh, I've been a big proponent of asking and advocating for small businesses and get the county to move forward in life with the governor as it relates to opening businesses and bars and getting things back going again. Just per the governor's direction, just following his footsteps. And I agree. And I know one of the things we've talked about is doing it safely. You know, safe. absolutely. Yeah. Doing it safely, uh, you know, following protocols, whatever they may be. Um, how do you feel about that? Yeah, no, and I think that's the key. Um, putting people back to work is, is critical, is important, but doing it safely. It's uh, let's get back to work safely. And that's kind of been what I've been telling people. That's kind of been the motto. Let's get back to work safely. And a lot of families want that. They want to be able to provide for their families because ultimately what's happening is there's such fear and anxiety and depression happening right now in our community um that people are suffering man i mean it's you know they're not they're really like they're saying to me john i'm not even going to have a home to have my family in let alone um you know worried about covid i we're going to be homeless um so it's it's one of those things where it's let's get back to work and let's do it safely and and to that point absolutely that's one of the things i noticed being in on this county commission meeting that we met at is um you know, the CDC came up with all their guidelines and this and that and the other thing and the percentages and blah, blah, blah. There was no mention of depression, uh, the raised yeah. alcoholism, the suicide rate has gone up. I had a few people reach out to me and tell me, hey, they know three people or, you know, even more than COVID. They, they know people that are uh, in, in, in dire strait right now. And I know that mm -hmm. you're a big proponent of mental health 
Yeah. And, uh, I mean, what do you think the impact right now is to small businesses and mental health and, and what can we do about it? You know, and I think the impact is going to be something that we're really not going to know fully for a while because so many people have been impacted in different ways. And even during the season of just isolation and then tack on unemployment and then tack on everything else that comes along with that, um, it'll be a very long time before we really know the lasting effects. But I think first and foremost is in order to tackle this mental health, part of that anxiety and mental health issues that we got to get people going and give them purpose again, um, get them taking care of their families, get them working again, get them in, uh, in some kind of habit, in some kind of routine so that people who suffer from PS, uh, PSD, people who suffer from anxiety, depression, mental health, these disorders, that they can get the help that they need to move forward. Uh, and it starts with just getting them back on a schedule, giving them purpose. Hey, I'm taking care of my family. This is my purpose. This is why I'm here. Uh, I'm working for this. I'm working for that. I'm working to accomplish this goal. I'm working to do this or do that. Uh, and then once we get some resources, once we get some things going again, and then it's talking about, okay, hey, how can we allocate these things to be able to take care and solve some of these, uh, provide some resources for behavior, health, mental health issues that are plaguing, plaguing our community and, and our county right now. Yeah, I think you bring up a great point. You know, people find self-esteem in their jobs. I know I do. Uh, yeah. You know, it's my reason to get up every morning. It's the way I provide for my family. Um, I've taken a bit of a hit right now. You know, deals that I had that were working. I'm in a commercial real estate business. And yeah. Lord knows, retail has taken a hit right now. And, you know, going into this with the Amazonification of everything, restaurants were the savior. Uh, right. You know, shopping centers that were... 10% restaurants were now 30, 35% restaurants. Everybody was leaning on those experiential places where, you know, people gather. And uh, that's just kind of the rug's been ripped out from under, from under everybody there. And it's, it's, it hasn't been easy to deal with. You know, I talked to bartenders. I talked to, uh, today I talked to John Metagene, who has opportunities, which is technically a bar, but he does craft beer, which is local. Uh, you know, he's tapping into all the local craft breweries, which is a mm. great industry. It's a great way to, to grow the economy. And, um, you know, he's dealing with the city and trying to get open and pivoting into a, um, you know, a food license that he's trying to get, right. which cost him like $13,000 just so he can get open. He's got a beautiful outdoor patio that the, uh, yeah. the city's not letting him take advantage of because of the zoning. Um, anything on that that you see going forward that uh, as a county commissioner that, you know, we can maybe expedite and be more nimble as a government to help the small business people? Yeah, and I think, you know, part of those CARES Act could be used as to create a system to streamline on um, the process for getting a variance or getting things that we need to be able to get small businesses the space they need. You know, one of the benefits of this whole thing is that the outside space now has kind of created this vibe out there that, you know, some of that could be used to help stay the course on that. And in that way, if we have another virus or something like this in the future, that outside space is already ready and developed and uh, it's part of the everyday culture. But really using maybe some of those CARES Act to be able to streamline that process for getting um, documents through the system or uh, getting certain things that you need to help make sure your business is operating and operating now a little bit more efficiently and quicker as you may need different things to help get going again in order to be in compliance as well with some of the regulation and guidelines for small businesses to be able to, to work and be open. Awesome. Well, I'm, I'm going to pivot a little bit and I want to ask you a little bit about, you know, what made you kind of get into this? You know, politics is a very kind of unforgiving, especially nowadays. Uh, it's, you know, it's a very cutthroat kind of thing. What motivated you to kind of get off the sidelines and, and throw your hat into the ring, so to speak? Yeah, no, and I believe, John, great question, that I was called to this work. And I believe that um, my experience, and I got my degree in computer science uh, from PBA, as I mentioned, uh, went to school there, but, you know, technology, innovative ideas to move us forward and to be able to have this finance degree and dealing with people and having relationships in the business community that um, running a small business and having uh, that experience as well has positioned me specifically for this time because that's what we're gonna need. We're gonna need experienced finance guys and then with innovative technology to be able to help this county progress forward and get back to 
where we were and beyond due to this pandemic and due to some of these restrictions that the that our county is experiencing seeing as of late. Awesome stuff. Um, okay, uh, I, I want to tell anybody who's out there watching right now that if you have a question that you'd like to pose to John, I'm looking at the feed right now on Facebook. Uh, John's been uh, basically offering up any 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 questions. He'll go ahead and answer them. Um, you know, we talked about let's get a little more into to mental health, and I know you're a big proponent of that. What would be your uh, platform or or going into the, the election, what, what would you be looking to change or looking to activate that maybe is not going on right now? Yeah, for the state of Florida, it's like the 49th state for resources that we receive for mental health, behavioral health. So first and foremost, it's looking at, all right, you know, Jerome Golden was a nonprofit in our community down on 45th Street that was a mental health facility that a lot of folks utilize in that community. Uh, recently closed down. So now if you really have a mental health issue, the only place for you to go is you got to get arrested by the sheriff and then go through their system. And then at that point, you can receive some mental health. Uh, and, and that's really expensive for this county if people have to get arrested just to get their mental health and uh, counseling and resources that they need. So first and foremost is figuring out, hey, partner with the business community as well as with the county and our resources and, and come up with a strategy to be able to have a local presence here uh, to be able to provide that mental health, behavioral health um, experience. But also, man, I wanna kind of stretch that a little bit and say with our, with our officers that are in the community, um, being able to have some mental health uh, folks with them as well, because some of the things that could be de-escalated if we had a mental health specialist on, on site uh, that knew how to handle themselves in those types of situations. But having that as well is an opportunity to help our county again and be uh, innovative and, and frontline with ideas and strategies that will overall save our county a lot of money in the long run, but also get a lot of people the help that they need. Awesome. Okay, so uh, I have a question from Carl Dickey, and he's basically saying how, if at all, could the could the county budget be reduced? Do you see any areas where we could be uh, making any savings or uh, lessening the burden on the taxpayer? So the county budget is $5 billion right now. And the two largest expenditures in the county budget are the school district and the sheriff. That's the two largest expenditures in the budget. So first thing I would do as a finance guy is look for efficiencies or things that are not inefficient that we're spending money on within the county budget. That means diving into the two largest expenditures and figure out, hey, where's all this money going? And I think right now, um, you know, what are some of the pressing needs within our community with the budget and the money that we have that we can better utilize some of these dollars towards? I don't know that um, cutting stuff out of the budget right now, John, is gonna, it's not that, it's not maybe making the budget smaller, but retooling how those, repurposing how those dollars are being spent. Because right now in this pandemic, and part of that could be the CARES dollars, but a lot of people are gonna need some transition um, to get us to move forward, even if it's invested in technology or ways to make the, the process easier to get, uh, you know, things done within the county that construction guys and contractors are constantly dealing with. You know, it's just really taking the dollars and the budget that we have and being more efficient with it. And then from there, you know, if people are spending the money wisely and doing what they're supposed to be doing with the money, most people are like, hey man, you know, you've got to pay taxes as part of the deal. But if you're doing the right thing, you're managing the budget, you're doing what you're supposed to do with the money as if I would be required to do with the money if it was my budget. You know, what you and I, we have our expenses at home and, you know, we can't go out and previously spend all our money on things that, and not pay our mortgage or print, you know, it's the same kind of deal. It's taking what you have and making sure that you're being as efficient as possible with that budget. And that's where I would start. Right. Okay, I know one of the things we, we were talking about is opening up safely. How do you feel that if you were to go with the governor's mandate, not mandate, but the governor's, I guess uh, Bashir basically took back the executive order, that's the process that happened. Um, and my understanding is, you know, whatever the governor says, you can only go more stricter. You know what I mean? You right. can't go the other way and be more uh, liberal with it. You have to right. be either stricter or follow the guidelines. Um, how would you, I guess, see us, envision us going forward 
um, in this COVID environment, but at the same time, staying safe and, um, and, and uh, you know, taking care of everybody. Yeah. So um, following the, the CDC guidelines that are, that are out there now for us, but you know what's interesting, John, a lot of companies have actually already, they have very strict protocol and policies for protecting their uh, team and their clients and their patrons. So a lot of them already have guidelines that are in place that are some of them more strenuous than the ones that are currently being proposed to the community. Um, and so just making sure that at the very minimum, we have a, a standard, a, a base standard that everyone adheres to across the board. Um, and then from there, letting each particular, um, like if, for example, if, if your particular patrons are more susceptible to uh, COVID, you may do, you may go a step up beyond the other guy who, who's not, you know, it depends on your business, a baseline for everyone that everyone can build from and then people can build in their standard beyond that because at the end of the day, John, I believe we're business owners and we're going to do whatever we have to do to make sure our clients come back to us and they don't go to someone else. So if that's saying that if our clients are expecting to see, hey, well, this business down the road, this, this is their standard and ours is less than that, we're probably going to up our standard a bit because we want to keep those clients coming through the doors. I think that small business, I mean, you know, if you're not, you're not living up to the standard, this is, they, people won't come back to your business and, and visit. So, you know, setting a standard, sticking to that standard, let that be the standard, no inconsistency. And so there's confusion, but this is the standard. And then having everyone build in uh, their specific standard, as you said, uh, can't be more liberal than that, but at least uh, building in a set standard that we can all adhere to and follow and get things moving again. One of the things I've been stressing with the Socially Distant Supper Club is for, you know, restaurants to really um, get their COVID protocols out there. I think it's as important, if not more important, than the, the food that they're serving. Um, I've even made an analogy of two people make burgers. One guy makes a decent burger and the other guy makes an awesome burger. The guy who makes the awesome burger, you know, people aren't wearing their masks, a little cluttered in there, not quite, you know, the highest hygiene. And then uh, the person who makes the ordinary burger, but is very clean, follows all the guidelines. Yeah. In this climate, people are gonna go to that restaurant. They're gonna right. go to the restaurant that is uh, going above and, and beyond to what you're saying, going above and beyond being COVID compliant. Yeah. So, so John, and the guy making the good burger, what he might do is notice that his business has declined and his clients are going across the street. He will probably now step his standard up to the standard that's required to keep his clients coming through the door. Well, that's what this country is built on. That's that's how that's how small businesses become the rock the, the, the rock of this company I mean this country. So you know that's that's exactly what, what it takes. It's, it's like I said when yeah you know, when COVID hit it's pivot or perish. You know a lot exactly. of these guys weren't doing curbside and I was like you guys gotta learn how to do curbside and they're like well that's not our wheelhouse. I'm like need to make it your wheelhouse right now. You know, right. I use a thing called the three C's and it's COVID, exactly what we were talking about. It's curbside and then it's cuisine. And I actually think mm -hmm. cuisine is third. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, can you get me in there? Can you get me out of there with less contact, with, uh, you know, with, with an efficient system where I feel like I'm getting hospitality, you know, right. I, I'm getting the food, you're dropping it in my trunk, whatever it may be. The employees mm -hmm. have gloves, masks, they're, 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 uh, they're clean, they're pressed, you know, all these things go a long way right now. And I know, you know, the restaurants especially have been feeling the stress right now because right. everybody's working for the health department, it seems. As soon as people walk in, I can see them. They're looking around, they're looking in the kitchen, they're peeking in, you know, the, is it, the mask falling down around there, are they grabbing it, are they pulling it up? So, right. uh, you know, the stress that these small businesses are under right now, especially the restaurants where, where my focus kind of is, is, um, is, is that the highest I've seen it. So it, it's, it's a tough route for these guys, but yeah, absolutely. To your point, uh, it, it's, it's, if you're losing business, you might want to take a look at how you're presenting yourself forward facing to the public. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, let's get into the employment. We were talking about mental health and employment. Uh, anything else you want to kind of get out there about your positions 
uh, where you think you differentiate yourself from uh, uh, Mr. Kerner, who you'll be going up against, who you are going up against. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, why should people vote for you versus Mr. Kerner? Yeah. So w one other thing I think is important. So my third was I uh, kind of built this campaign on is affordable housing. So, you know, in 2019, a year ago, I know that sounds weird, but businesses were going great. They were booming. And really, people were having then a hard time finding people to actually work in their businesses because they couldn't afford to live in Palm Beach County. Um, so making uh, it affordable for people to be able to live here in Palm Beach County, enjoy the beach, enjoy this and enjoy that. Is, is critical as well. So uh, being pro-business minded, uh, making sure we're growing our small businesses, we, they have an affordable, family, families have an affordable place to live, and then tackling some of the behavior and mental health issues are the three things that's most important to me. And how I differentiate, differentiate from Kerner really is being able to cross uh, borderlines, if you will, and communicate with all people. I mean, so I'm African-American, as you can tell, John. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but I communicate with everyone um, in across every line and every whatever. That's just the nature of first my business, uh, being a finance guy and working with families and businesses and their planning. I got to be able to communicate uh, clearly and concise with everyone. Um, that's first and foremost. But my business has also taught me as an investment and financial planning guy to dive into budgets. Where are we being wasteful? Where can we make some changes? Where can we save here? What can we do there to be more efficient? Um, I bring that, that experience to the table and I got a degree in computer science. So at the end of the day, innovative ideas, financial planning, finances, budgeting is all part of what the county does. And then really, man, I, I'm just a servant leader. I listen. You know, you know when, you, when you work with people and their money, one of the things you gotta do before you can come up with some kind of strategy and plan to help, you gotta know what the problem is. You gotta listen first and then you provide a solution. So listening first as a servant, I've learned that over uh, my career and I've been in uh, financial services for the last 13 years. So um, learned a lot from a lot of different people and, uh, and want to bring that to the table on the commission to be able to serve a different light, a different, something that's different than what's currently there now. So we'll get ready to wrap this up. I know you're at Novo right now, because obviously there's a, a thing behind you. I know that we want to mention that people, you know, that want to get to vote, you can register at voteflorida.gov slash home. I think that's very important. I know one of the things is have a lot of people have opinions about politics and then they're not registered to vote. It's kind of the unfortunate thing. You know, a lot of people have opinions about things, but uh, when it comes time where the rubber meets the road, uh, it's very important that people vote. You know, so voteflorida.gov, uh, find out if you're registered, how you're registered, if you need to, uh, you know, uh, fill out some forms, get them done, get it in there. That way you're eligible. November 3rd is the big election time. That's when this election is going to happen. Um, I know that you have a couple of websites for people if they want to check you out further about your message or if they want to get involved in the campaign. I know you're doing some sign uh construction events if you want to go ahead and give us a uh, uh yeah. yeah and john i'll leave you with this thought i would encourage uh each of you as i i know the governor last night just came out and said hey we're moving to full phase two but the county is on our five phase plan for phase two i would encourage you partner with us let's our message will be stronger together don't uh open just to open because ultimately other businesses will be affected who don't open so I want to encourage everyone to lean in with us. Let's work together. Let's communicate. Let's advocate to the county why it's important that you should be. You know, I urge you don't just open and just say, hey, the governor said we're doing it, we're doing it, and, and the county get all over you and you red flag your business. I don't want that to happen either. And I want to stress it because that's not the purpose of this. I want us to work together. We have to ultimately work together um, to be able to communicate what the struggle is that really, that people want to get back to work safely. So let me, and, I don't mean to interrupt you there, but how do we do that? We've got, the frustration level has really reached a, a pinnacle right now. Yeah. You know, I mean, we posted last night, uh, you know, about what was going on and, and, and everybody got excited. And then we wake up this morning and now we're going the other way. So I, I get what you're trying to say. And uh, absolutely, you know, but when does civil disobedience come into this and how do we, 
you know, when we've got, when our, when our requests are falling on deaf ears, which I hate to say it, but that's how I felt going into that commission meeting. I mean, they, the public comment was, 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 was foregone conclusion. You know, they had presented their plan. It was pretty much done. I read body language. You know, it's great to be in the room because you're not following you where the camera wants you to look. You right. can look at people that you want to look at. And the right. disinterest I saw from a lot of the commission members there uh, was, was appalling. So yeah. I understand what you're saying, but I think uh, I think there's a bit of a bubbling up that's going up on right now. And, and John, look, let me stress too that bubbling up is good. What that tells me is that we as citizens want change. We want something different. We want something, someone that's pro business. To your point of getting out and voting, that's what's going to make the difference. There could be another virus down the road. There could be something else that could cause small businesses to change. If we continue in the direction that we're continuing. Our businesses and families will always be exposed if we continue to let the, the current system and commission that we have in place stay in place. But with that being said, we have to do it in the way that um, the, there's a right way to do things and we're trying to do it the right way. And the right way to do it is to vote to people that you want in on the commission that believe and have the same interest and importance of the issues that you have. So. Getting the businesses back open, first and foremost, being pro-business is important. So as you were saying, hey, go and vote, I'm saying that I understand that people are bowling over. I'm telling you right now, I'm, I'm talking to people. I had, John, six calls before this call of just 30 minutes of hearing people's story and why they're upset and how they're, how they're draining their bank accounts. And they're literally, you know, like it's – the decisions that they're having to make now, John, are, are just, they never would have thought in a million years that they would have to get to this point to start making these types of decisions. Yeah, to businesses that have never had to lay off anyone that's now laying off tons of people, just the brokenness out there. Hang in there, John, that's the reason why we're doing these calls together, is to build awareness for people to say, hey, look, we want change. Who, can we, can we vote somebody else in different that aligns, their agenda aligns with ours. Um, so I encourage you guys, vote johnmaples.com look at my website my information but we need volunteers we need you to donate build a coffer so we have a chance to communicate this message to reach more people and to tell the story we, we're going to do it the right way and we're going to be there on october uh, september 15th i think it's uh, a week away or is it october 15th john uh for the next county commission meeting yes and we're going to be there and we're going to advocate and we're going to and we're going to ask them again hey please open up the county to phase two Let's move forward. Uh, we want to get back to work safely. No, is it September 15th or October 15th? Let me look at my calendar, John. I, I, I thought somebody posted last night because I think it is important, and I definitely plan to be there, and uh, we'll definitely figure that out. But, September uh, 15th, John. It's on yes. my calendar, September so Basically 15th. four days away, uh, yeah. which would be probably Tuesday, I want to say. Uh, yeah. There will be another yeah. county yeah. commission yeah. meeting. I plan on being there. Uh, and I'm sure you'll be there as well. Be there. Uh, you know, I, I, I really feel that there is a frustration that's yeah. going on and uh, the middle class folks and the blue collar and the, the, the lower, I don't want to say, I hate using that word lower class, but you know, every restaurant has a dishwasher and every restaurant has bussers and every restaurant and small business has people that sweep up and right. are entry level positions and all those people are without employment right now. And uh, we've got to do something. You know, I, I really think it's reached that point. And um, with, with Governor DeSantis putting out what he did and then having that taken back for Palm Beach County, I think uh, there's a level of frustration that is palpable. I know I see it uh, on my social media. I see it, I hear it from the restaurants. And uh, I think it's, it's what we, to what you said, change. There needs to be some change here. Right. Yeah. And I see it, John, with you. And I, in no way am I making small of the pain and the suffering that people are feeling. I see it in my own clients when they call me. I hear it in their voice. Um, you know, um, I, and, and you know people are hurting. And uh, let's use that, that focus. Let's dial it in and let's focus it on change. And let's do it safely. Safely. Right. And uh, and so that's that's the message that I'm communicating. And that's the message that that's resonating with people now. And uh, and that's what that's what we want to communicate to everyone.
Well, I appreciate you taking the time out to, to come visit and uh, to, to get your word out there. We're going we're gonna to do the, what we can. And, uh, you know, I just want people, I didn't even know about county commission. Tell you the truth. I mean, I consider myself politically savvy. You know, I knew, I know my mayor and I knew DeSantis. And then all of a sudden when COVID happened, they were like, well, Kerner is the mayor of the county. And I was like, what? Huh? How does that work? You know what I mean? So it's for a guy who considers himself politically savvy, it was an eye-opening experience for me to realize the sway yeah. that is held in the county positions. So, um, so let me add this one thought too, John. Sorry to interrupt you. Oh, that's all right. So by electing me, I would not be mayor of Palm Beach County. Mayor is a elected position by the seven county commissioners on the dais. So they would say, hey, we want this person to be mayor and represent the, the, the board. So I'm coming in as one of the seven county com commissioners and the, the mayor itself is actually an elected position among the county commissioners that serve on that on that board. That's an interesting point. So basically what happens after the election happens on November 3rd, uh, the next meeting they reappoint a mayor or if it's Kerner, then it stays Kerner? So it's probably gonna be um, the, the VP who's there now. Um, oh gosh, I'm a brain fart. Either Greg Weiss or it's- uh, Not Greg Mac Weiss, Bernard. it's uh, not Valache, but uh, gosh. Weinrob? Weinrob, he's a VP right now, a vice chair. And uh, so he'll probably move into the chair position, but it's an, it's an elected position among, um, among the commissioners. And just the, for, for, the yeah, for the audience's sake, uh, Weinroth and Valache were the two abstaining right. votes, I guess, or the two no votes on right. opening up, which as a politics work sometimes, didn't mean that they didn't want to open up. It meant that right. they wanted to open up quicker. Right, to face So that's why they voted no on it. Right, exactly, yeah. So they supported getting things going again a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. So, John, I'm going to give you the floor here for the next uh, minute or two. Please, uh, okay. it's all yours. Let people know yeah. uh, what you want to let them know. I really appreciate your time and taking the time out to, uh, to come and, and, and get your message. I, I know Nobu is having an event, I believe, pretty soon, right? Yeah, gonna... yeah. so October 22nd um, from 5 to 7, we're going to meet here at Nobu. And, uh, what was that date again? October 22nd from 5 to 7. Uh, we're going to meet here at Novo and um, we'll have a live band. We'll have some folks introduction. We're, uh, an opportunity for people to connect with, with me, with other people in the industry and to tell their story. Um, we're going to get as many people here as we can and, um, and, and um, an opportunity uh, for all of us to connect. So really be looking out for that October 22nd here at Novo. Uh, in Boynton. Uh, my website again is vote John Maples, J O N M A P L E S dot uh, com, and you can donate there. You can volunteer, uh, find a role that you feel like you can bring the most value uh, in and, and help us. And so we're, we're asking for everyone to get involved. I know a lot of people are, they have their political views and they post them on Facebook, but they don't vote or they post them on Facebook, but they won't support their candidates. So guys, I'm encouraging you, now is the time, if we're at that boiling point, if you're really tired of what's happening to your businesses, tired of what's happening, what you're seeing going on with your family, jump in here, get involved and serve and help us change this thing, help us move the needle. We can do it, we can do it together. And that's been my message, let's do it together. Our voices are stronger, we're stronger, we're together. And so John, I appreciate you, I appreciate the opportunity to jump on and, and share some. Well, I appreciate you, John, getting involved in a very uh, kind of a blood sport uh, thing right now. And I believe that you were called to be here right now. And uh, we wish you the best of luck. And thank you so much. Thank you, John. Take care.